hello guys we are back with our next tutorial in this tutorial let's see all about hartley oscillator so now we'll be going through different types of oscillators guys totally there are five types of oscillators we'll be discussing each in a single video from now on six videos will be those things only guys okay so basically once you hear the word hartley oscillator you should remember the generalized equation of lc generalized equation guys so a hartley oscillator consists of inductors and capacitors guys okay sorry for that i didn't notice that guys sorry so basically the diagram of hartley oscillator will be like this okay one amplifier with four resistors and two capacitors two inductors and one capacitor so in hartley we will be having two inductors and one capacitor that's the main point the diagram of call pits will also be exactly same with one inductor and two capacitors that's the only change from hartley to call pits so this is the diagram guys we'll be discussing individually that what's the role of each and every element in this don't worry about that everything will be clear okay just a second guys i'll be setting this up okay so now let us go through our tutorial that is all about Hartley oscillator and we'll be deriving the expression also guys don't worry okay so this is the diagram of Hartley oscillator be ready to practice it guys you need to practice practice it perfectly with every individual resistor and its name so basically Hartley oscillators z1 and z2 are inductors i hope everyone remember the tank circuit guys this is the tank circuit which we had drawn previously z1 z2 z3 so z1 and z2 are replaced by two inductors l1 and l2 and z3 is replaced by a capacitor c so resistors r1 r2 r e provides the necessary dc bias to the transistor it's going to give the supply to the transistor okay and c e is a bypass capacitor right here okay c1 and c2 are coupling capacitors fine the feedback network consists of inductor l1 and l2 and capacitor c1 okay i wrote c or c1 okay that's fine anything will be same so when the voltage supply vcc is switched on a trans a transient current is produced in the tank circuit consequently damped harmonic motion harmonic oscillations are set up so vcc will be our supply guys it will be given as 12 volts maybe that's the minimum amount i think so 12 volts so once we give it to the this supply the amplifiers and everything vcc will provide the supply to it and harmonic conjo oscillations are formed okay so basically if the terminal one see here guys if terminal one okay i'll be drawing a rough diagram here one two three right one two three we are having inductors so inductor one inductor two fine so if terminal one is positive potential with respect to 3 so this is negative right so with respect to 3 means at an instance the terminal 2 will become negative okay so we'll be considering 3 as the intermediate part so that we'll be comparing with it so if terminal 1 is positive with respect to 3 then terminal 2 is negative so similarly at any instant it will be negative okay even okay Okay, that's fine. If ter terminal 2 is positive with respect to this, then terminal 1 will be negative. That's also an alter case. Okay. Thus, the phase difference between the terminal 1 and 2 is 180 degrees. Right. So, previously I have told. Previously, I have told that we need a complete phase shift of 360 to form a perfect oscillator. Right. Okay. So, here from the tank circuit, we'll be getting 180. And the rest 180 is given by our amplifier. We will be using CE amplifier. Right guys? Yeah, I think so. We, are, we will be using CE amplifier. Yep, that's true. So it is going to give the another 180 degrees. So at the total, it's going to become 360 degrees phase shift. So now I hope everyone got a small idea on it. So now we are done with the phase shift point. So the another point is the open loop gain should be 1. That is mod A beta is equals to 1. Only then the circuit is going to be the circuit is going to be acting as an oscillator. So I hope everyone got a small idea on it, guys. So now let us try to. 
so now let us try to analyze the hartley oscillator values and let us find its generalized equation so hartley oscillator z1 and z2 are inductors and z3 is capacitor let m be the mutual inductance guys remember one more thing only if there are only if there are two inductors then only this mutual inductance is going to come into role guys if two inductors are not there this part is not of any use this part guys this m's these two will not be existing so you'll be observing that in colpitt's oscillator don't worry we'll, we'll be going through it also in the next tutorial don't worry so basically here we are having two inductors so mutual inductance will be there so i'll be assuming mutual inductance as m so Z1 is equals to JWL1 plus JWM. Z2 is equals to JWL2 plus JWM. Got it? So now Z3, our final. Z3 is equals to 1 by JWC. That is nothing but if you send J to numerator, we'll be just writing negation. Negation J by WC. So I hope now everyone is clear with these three forms how I have wrote them. Okay, guys? So now... We will be substituting these values in our generalized equation of an oscillator. So, this is our generalized equation, guys. I hope everyone remember this. HIE into Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 plus Z1 into Z2 into 1 plus HIE plus Z1 into Z3. Okay, guys. I hope everyone is clear with this equation from where I have wrote. In the previous tutorial, we had discussed that. So, now you will be substituting the values of Z1, Z2 and Z3 in it okay so i got this much three line big equation oh my god okay that's fine so now i'll be taking as many j's as possible common guys so from this whole part i can take a j common here i can take a j here i can take a j so j into j will become minus one so that's the reason why i got minus the omega square or w square you may call it as okay so here I took H I E J. We took three common. So we got this equation. So in the last part we can take only J common. J common. Okay. We can multiply here also. J into J minus J. So plus we became. Okay. So now I hope everyone understood that how we got this equation. So if you observe cleanly this part is a non-imaginary part and this is an imaginary part in which j is there in this j is not there so there is a small trick that if you make imaginary equals to zero we will be getting the frequency if we make the if we make the other part that is the real part zero we will be getting h f e so let us do in this problem guys don't worry so imaginary part is nothing but w h i e j into L1 plus L2 plus 2M minus 1 by omega square C. Okay, 1 by W square C. That's fine, guys. Omega or W. Okay, it's fine. So, imaginary part, I will be writing this. So, equals to 0. So, just... So, we can clearly send this part to this side. So, the equation is really, really small now. L1 plus L2 plus 2M minus 1 by W square C. So, I'll be sending this part there so that all positive signs I can see that. So, L1 plus L2 plus 2M is equals to 1 by W square C. So, omega is equals to 2 pi F. I hope everyone knows this formula. So, I'll be substituting this omega value right here. Okay. So basically, let's write this equation in terms of omega and then we'll be substituting it, guys. So that will be really easy. So omega square is equals to 1 by L1 plus L2 plus 2M into C. So omega is equals to 1 by under root L1 plus L2 plus 2M into C. So let us substitute omega value. Omega is nothing but 2 pi F, right? Okay. Okay. So... Our requirement is to find f, right? Okay, excuse me. So f is equals to 1 by 2 pi under root L1 plus L2 plus 2m into C. So now let us assume L1 plus L2 plus 2m is equals to L. So f is equals to 1 by 2 power, sorry, 1 by 2 pi under root LC is our 
frequency formula for a Hartley oscillator. So now let us similarly using the same trick guys by using making real part 0 we will be finding HFE. So if you observe cleanly it should have HFE guys. In the previous one we should have W as we will be writing W is equals to 2 pi F like that we will be getting F. So HFE means we should have HFE in that equation. So omega square into L1 L1 plus M into L2 plus M into 1 plus HFE is equals to L1 plus M by C. So further moving on by sending this this side and taking as many terms as common. I took these many terms common. So I'll be sending all this to this side so that all this to this side so that it will become L2 plus M is equals to like this. So one thing guys you need to remember that we already know the value of omega square. I hope everyone saw that omega square. Okay. So omega square is that you will be substituting the value so that the values will be cancelling as many as possible. So at the end you are gonna get HFE is equals to L1 plus M sorry L1 plus M by L2 plus M. So this will be our value of HFE and frequency of a Hartley oscillator. So now I hope everyone is 100% clear with clear with the topics that we have discussed all about Hartley oscillator. In the next tutorial we will be going through Colpitt's oscillator. Thank you. Thanks for watching.